lot for your welcome and your lovely hospitality. I'm from Baltimore, so I'm a little bit of a country boy that just loves to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. And we thank God. It's a simple song we're going to sing together. You can help me out. It's just a call and response, okay? Amen. Anybody grateful to God's mercies and grace today? Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. 
We thank God. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Can anybody give God praise for what he's already done? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My grandma would say, been so good, Lord. Haven't done everything right, but you've been so good, Lord. Constantly making mistakes, but you find a way to be good, Lord. Been so good, Lord. I'll leave you all alone. We say, and we thank you. Anybody got to thank you in your heart? And we thank you for making ways out of no way. And we thank you. And we thank you. Can we sing hallelujah one time? I'll leave you alone. Everybody. something sweet to the Lord slip from your mouth you don't have to applaud me just give all honor and glory to God anybody 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 anywhere just tell the Lord thank you for being God thank you for still being in control no matter how out of control life may seem we are grateful that you're still sitting high and still looking low that he that sleepeth, he that watches over Israel shall slumber never and nor shall he sleep and thank you we thank you that the earth is still yours and the fullness thereof and all the day that dwell therein. We're grateful. We're grateful that trouble don't last always, but your mercy is everlasting and your truth endure through all generations. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to your will, hallelujah to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is there a hallelujah in the house? Is there a hallelujah in the house? Is there a hallelujah in the house? Is anybody thankful for his great faithfulness? Is anybody thankful for his great faithfulness? Hallelujah, we thank God for God's faithfulness. We love the steadfast love of the Lord. Lamentation says it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy hallelujah. And then we say hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it gets real hard for us, but we got to say hallelujah. Sometimes the road seems rough, but we got to say hallelujah. Sometimes the terrain don't look like how we want it to look, but we got to say hallelujah. There's a praise on the inside of our spirit just because God has given us God's great faithfulness. Hallelujah. And I want to not get in trouble, so I'll make sure. You can turn me down a little bit. Don't want to get too much in trouble. Hallelujah. Welcome to our online visitors that are with us to this great church, historic First Church. I love you. Hallelujah. Pastor has left me with a great assignment today. Um, he and First Lady are traveling, and so he called me and said, would I stand in for him? And I told him that is a very hard task to stand in for him, because he does such a mighty and magnificent job. And usually my job is to just sit over there and do the musical stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord did call me to preach, and I definitely am a preacher. Hallelujah. Preacher par excellence. I bring you greetings, not only from the great historic First Church of God in Christ here at 221 Kingston Avenue in Brooklyn, New York, 
but I also bring you greetings from the LP to Community Church Baptist, where I serve as senior pastor uh, and have served as senior pastor for the last seven years. And so I'm thankful to God to be in this space at this time. Thankful to our music ministry for uh, working wonderful uh, in the absence of our pastor. Can we give them a hand? <laughs> Hallelujah. They're doing their magnanimous job. Thank you, uh, Brother Tim and Brother Scott and Brother Ricardo. And thank you to my friend Antonio Chase, who has come all the way from Baltimore. I mean, he's here in New York, but he's Baltimore all the way through and through. Uh, and so he gave me a little Southern worship this morning, and so I'm thankful to God for what he brought. Amen. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. He said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Can I say that one more time? Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity, oh eternity. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw, draw men to me. Let us pray, eternal and ever wise God, creator of all things and orchestrator of our lives, be with us this moment of impartation. That what is spoken here would seep into the hearts of your children and touch them and all their generations. We thank you, God, for the word that cannot return to you void. So now we ask you to hide this preacher behind the cross and stand up in your servant that people will hear the words you have purpose for them to hear on this day and we will be careful to give you the glory and honor and know that you will crown this moment with success in jesus name we pray amen i want to talk to you for a moment if i can stay right there tim you don't have to go nowhere yet talk to you for a moment from the subject representers of christ representatives of christ a familiar melody, a timeless classic hymn written in 1903 by a bivocational pastor, musician, and life insurance business owner. Who better to ask the question about the inter eternal insurance of a non-believer than someone whose job is to make sure that their lives are insured? The hymn writer Johnson Oatman Jr. wrote these words, how to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer Jesus gave the key. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. He goes on and says, the world is hungry for the living bread. Uh, let the world in you the Savior see, trust him, and do not doubt the word that he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Saints of God, I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, for though whom we have all abundant life, and we are exceedingly glad. Today I want to hang a sermonic hat on a message of this song that preaches while using our biblical text to support and lead us to a place that we must go. Is that all right? If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And because we have technological advances, for those of you at home and in the sanctuary, we have the scripture that will be put for you here on our screens. 
I'm using the Amplified Bible text, and it reads on this wise. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit, and the old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. But all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him and gave us this ministry of reconciliation so that by our example we might bring others to him. Uh, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is restoration to favor with God. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us, we as Christ's representatives plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God, and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Johnson Oatman Jr. writes in his Lift Him Up hymn of 1903 that the world is hungry for the living bread, and in this time of war, rumor of war, financial downfall, Supreme Court judgments, evangelical meddling and tampering, internet clickbait and conversations about church doctrine in public forums that the world, merely 100 or so years after Oatman's declaration, still rings true. If we really want to be true, there is never a time when the world is not hungry for the living bread. There have been so many issues in the span of time in which this hymn was written that its timelessness is cemented into history. If you turn on the news for just 10 minutes alone, you may become so depressed because of all the drama and the violence and the oppression and the sickness and the homelessness and the joblessness and the disease in our world that, yes, there is a need for the living bread. We, the believers of Christ, know that Jesus to be the living bread that Oatman was talking about. The saints of old would say, if we ain't ever needed the Lord before, surely we need him. We need him now. We need him now. We want him to be with us, guide us, and protect us through all that we are enduring. If we'd ever needed the Lord before, we needed him over the two years that we have dealt and been in a pandemic where we have closed our church doors, closed up all type of things, closed jobs, closed things, and now we're respected to come back stronger than ever, but we're depressed in our mind, losing all kinds of things, and we're going through so many things, and people are dealing with so many issues and they're going back to their jobs and going back to their churches and they're dealing in such a way that the world is hungry for the living bread. Even in the midst of all that's going on in the world, we still have the church universal, which is separated by denomination and classism and race and nationality and doctrine and political views. And somehow through all that is in the midst of this separation and diversity, we should all exist to do the work that Christ has indeed commanded us to do. The Great Commission inspires us to go into the world, baptizing and teaching the things that the disciples have observed. And that command still rings true in us today. No matter how dark the world seems to get, it can always use some light, and that light is the only, and Christ is the only light that can bring that light to us. 
Since we, the believers, are called to be the salt in the earth and the light of the world, we have a responsibility to live out the Great Commission. It is a function for us all, regardless of our church title, our denominational affiliation. We are representatives of Christ. I'll say that again. We are representatives of Christ. Can you say that with me? We are we are representatives of Christ. It is important to know that while preparing for this assignment, the Holy Spirit held me captive to the notion that there was a need for more reconciliation in the body of Christ. Not only must we agree on, not only that we must agree on every little thing, but that we are aware that our function in this time is seeming, uh, this time of uh, a seeming great calamity, that we can do the work that is assigned our hands to do. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, a church that he founded himself and is now writing to the church while he is in his travels. Paul's companions, Timothy and them, the others have given him a report of what was going on in the Corinthian church. Tell me if you recognize some of the things that are going on in the Corinthian church in the text that we read today. It seems as if there was some dissension in the ranks. It seems as if there weren't things going as smoothly as they ought to. It seems as if there were an ought between members, that there were infighting, there was factions, there were differences of opinion, there was differences of class, there were all kinds of issues, so much so that when they came to take the communion, he said, if you didn't eat at home, don't come to the communion table. Could you imagine that? In the book of Corinthians. Things are going on in, in the church of Corinth, and so now Paul is responding to what's happening in Corinth because he's hearing the word of what's going on, and he's realizing that there's a group over here that wants to do Bible study on Wednesday, and there's a group over here that wants to have Bible study on Tuesday, but the Bible study on Wednesday is not the Bible study on Tuesday, so Paul has to come in the middle of the thing and say, guess what, there's a problem here, I need to come in and fix some stuff, I got something to say. Doesn't it sound like the church of today? I might, it's not, might not be historic first church, but it sounds like the church of today. Amen. You got things going on in Atlanta. You got things going on in New York. You got people fighting over whether or not we should tithe on the internet. We're talking about so many different things, and we're talking back and forth and back and forth, and Paul has a word for the people. Paul has something to say. Paul levels the playing field, reminding the church of Corinth, mostly Gentile, that they were new creatures. He said, hey, don't forget your salvation. Don't, don't forget the fact that when you took on this Christ-like life, the things that you used to do, you can't do those things anymore. That because we're living in this new this new life, this new walk, this new talk, this new way of living, the things that you used to do, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things become amen. Paul asserts that if any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. And so what does it mean to be in Christ? What it means to be in Christ is that Christ has taken on through the confession of their sins, and they have been cleaned of their, cleansed of their unrighteousness. And now, therefore, they are justified by faith to be a part of the family of God. And God can now look at them even though they're in their transgressions, but he looks at them through the lens of Jesus Christ. Am I all right today? Am I doing all right? So with this newness of life, the church has to act civilized and do away with the arguing and the fighting and come to a place of reconciliation with one another. What a lesson that we need to learn today. With all that we've been going through in the body of Christ, we should do away with the infighting and come on one accord to do God's work. Well, what is God's work, you ask the preacher? Well, I'm glad that you asked the question. Paul doesn't want anything to hinder the work of Christ that was done on the cross in that time, or in this day and age, to say the least. We can't do anything to make the work any more diminished because we are representatives of Christ. Can we say that again? We are 
Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. Paul is showing us that in Christ, our transgressions are blotted out. We have reconciliation to God, and we have access to God where we once did not, because sin was the wedge between man and God, and Jesus became sin and did so that we might be reconciled to God. So if we can be reconciled to God, surely we can reconcile within ourselves. We can get away with the quibbles and the factions and the arguments and the fights and the disagreements and the very diversities because if we do it toward one another, then it would be seen by those on the outside looking in and then we can call those that are not believers into the place of being believers. Amen? Remember, our goal is to reach the masses, men of every birth. We have to be reconciled with each other before we can be reconciled, before we can reconcile anybody else and be effective. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds. Now, I just want to stop right there. It's not in my text, but I've been germinating over it all week, that they would see your good deeds. And uh, you can, could imagine that with us being in a place of being uh, 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 the light of the world, that we're always being seen, and we're uh, uh, a city that cannot be hid. And so because we cannot be hid under a bed, and because we cannot be hid, people are always looking at us. So they're looking at us when we're going to the grocery store. They're looking at us when we're talking and having our side conversations in the middle of the street. They're looking at us when we do something on the street. Something happened to me this Friday, and it tested my very ability to be the Christian that I said that I would be. I had two, I had a pair of sneakers in my bag coming from work, and I had a pair of shoes on my feet. And I saw a young man on the train that had no shoes. And somehow he came over to me and he said, Sir, you wouldn't happen to have another pair of shoes, would you? And so I said, I sure do. And I reached in my bag, and I pulled out the shoes, and I gave it to the young man. And he said, certainly, sir, God has blessed you. Men might see your good works. Now, I could have walked right past him, had the shoes in my pocket, and didn't do anything, right? Because that's what we do sometimes. And sometimes it's, we can do that, and it's necessary. But if you feel prompted in your heart to be the representative of Christ at that moment, he might, I don't know what he was going through. I don't know what he was dealing with. I don't know where he, where he had come from. He had bags on his body, he had bags on his body that he was carrying. I don't know that he might have just been put out of somewhere and he told him that he couldn't take his shoes with him. And so the, the very small thing that I did for him might be the very thing that he needed just in that day to go on and move to a place where he understood that God indeed was looking out for him. And then somebody else, I, I gave the seed. Now, somebody else might come and water it and say, if you're in the place where you need something else, I can give you what it is that you need. And they may give him shelter and things that he needs and so that he can become rehabilitated and reconciled within himself. And then, ah, oh, he's becoming reconciled within himself. He become reconciled with God. We have a job to do in everything we do. We have people of the world looking at us, how it's supposed to be done. So we have to show that reconciliation wherever best we can. There are people that need healing, an example of healing, and we have to show genuine healing. There are people that need an example of love, and we have to show them an example of love. There are people that need to see how we can reach across the aisle even when we don't necessarily agree with one another. We have to show how that work is done. I promise you that if we do it in the church, then Congress can do it. If we do it in the church, then the Supreme Court can do it. And they'll get on the same page with us. We are Christ's representatives. Somebody say, we are Christ's representatives. We are Christ's representers. We are Christ's representers. Along with our salvation came a ministry so powerful that it allows Christ to work through us to reach others. 
We reach them through the love of God and spreading the gospel message. Well, what is the gospel message? That Christ came, Christ died, that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Some people get it, get, get it mixed up. We want to make sure that people understand that Christ came, he lived, and he died that I might have life. He died to give me life. John 3, 16 says that for he, for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. There's a reason that we are come to a point of salvation within ourselves. It's not only for ourselves. The salvation is not for me. It's not just for me. It's not just that I'm saved and I'm cool and I'm in my own box and I'm doing my own thing and I'm not going to talk to nobody with my salvation. I'm just going to be who I am. I'm going to walk and make sure that somebody else knows Jesus. I want to make sure that somebody else has an encounter with the man. I want to know that somebody else is going to be able to make it in. I want to make somebody else to have the same blanket of covering that I have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory because we realize that even in us, that while Christ is reconciling us, that he's helping to reconcile others. That the light that is shining in us is shining outward to others. So when the light is shining outward to others, we're going to shine that light at the grocery store. When the light is shining out to others, we're shining that light at the barbershop and the, and, 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 and the barbershop and the hair salon. We're shining that light wherever we go. Hold up the light wherever we go. Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He's ever shining in my soul. He's doing the work in me. While I'm in the community and doing what I'm doing, every time people see me, they see me going and they see me working and they see me working and they see me working, I say I'm doing the work of the Lord. When people catch you, they should catch you doing the work of the Lord, doing the work of the Lord so much that they want to do what it is that you're doing. They want to do, they see your good works and they glorify God that is in heaven. There's an old song that I want to sing and I'll get out of this moment. I hear my grandmother telling me to slow down. I hear her telling me to take a pause. The song simply goes like this, I'm gonna heal it so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Anybody know that song? I'm gonna live so God can use me Anyway, Lord, anytime. Anybody gonna live? Oh, I'm gonna live so God can use me. Anyway, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me. Anyway, Lord. Anytime, oh, I'm going to pray so God can use me anyway, Lord. Anytime, I'm going to pray so God can use me anyway, Lord. Anytime, oh, well, I'm going to fast so. God can use any way, any time, I'm going to fast so, God can use any way, I'm going to live so, I'm going to live, I'm going to live so, God can use me.
This message that God has given unto us, he gave us salvation, it's for us. But it's so that the light that shines in us can shine out of us. So that we can become the representation that God needs in the world. We become God's foot soldiers, doing the work of Christ everywhere we go. So every time I step, I'm going to step and show the people that God is working. Every time I move, I'm going to show the people that God is moving. Every time I breathe, I'm going to show that God is helping me to breathe. Every time I walk, I'm walking into my healing. I'm walking into a place where they understand that God is using me. Hallelujah, Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. If you can use anything, you can use this old servant. You can use me. Use me while you can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody want to be used by God? Anybody want to be used by God? Anybody want to be used by God? Hallelujah. Anyway, Lord. Let's mm, stay right there. I'm going to live. I'm going to live so God, God. Anyway, anytime, I'm going to live so God can use me anyway. with the love of Jesus Christ. I often tell my story, I'm gonna go up a little bit. I often tell my story, and to the mothers in this church, I, I know that you're praying for me in this moment, but I tell my story, but I don't tell the whole story. And I believe that the reason why the Lord wanted me to tell the story is because I needed to tell the story. And so I'll tell this part and I'll get out of your way. And then anybody that wants to commit to living so God can use them any way and any time will be able to come and we'll pray for you. The elders will pray for you. The, the evangelists will pray with you. We can lay hands if we need to just so that you will be able to understand that when you leave here today, your life is worth something and it's not just for you to hold your salvation for yourself. On July 31st, of, two, of July 31st of 2003, I had a sharp pain in my chest and I was rushed to the hospital. The doctors told me that had I come any later, I would have had a punctured lung and I would not have been able to breathe and they would have had to put me on oxygen to breathe. The doctors told me that in that moment, that the condition that I was in, the disease that I had been living with for seven years up until that time, had taken my body so much so that I had six months to live. During that six months, in my, during that time while I was rehabilitating and trying to get better, the doctors gave me a medication, and the medication that the doctors gave me, instead of the medication making me better, the medication made me worse. The medication made me darker. I was as dark as this microphone right here. Just dark, black, pitch black. And every time my mother saw me, she would smile in my face, go back to her hotel room and cry all night long. She didn't believe, she knew that I, was, it wasn't, I wasn't a done for. She knew, she knew that I wasn't gonna just go like that. But there were some people that were not so much believing. There were some people that were saying, oh, because you live this type of life and you did this and you did that, that this is what you deserve for what it is that you did. And to be an actuality, while I don't believe that fully, I realize that there we are all to get the repercussions of what it is that we do. And so we are owed a certain type of punishment for what it is that we do. So I don't want to get that, that, that misconstrued. Within this time, I totally lost faith in church. And I walked away from church because I felt like the people that were coming to see me didn't have faith that God was going to do what I knew that God was going to do in me. Are you following me? Are you good with, you with me? I was in the hospital for three and a half weeks before they took me out of the hospital. 
And when I got out of the hospital, my friends were so in disbelief that I was out of the hospital that they sent me back to the hospital and put me in a mental institution because they told me that I was crazy because when I got out of the hospital, I was out before I should have been out. I should have stayed in the hospital because I was so sick and I should not have been out. But the doctors had released me. So now my friends were against me. My family was against me in the most part. And I was just me by myself. And the Holy Ghost wants me to tell this story because while I was in the bathtub, when I got out of the hospital, I ended up staying at a friend's house and I was hearing the words of the Lord through songs. And the songs just kept coming. Songs that I had sung over my lifetime until that point. And so I heard, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. I heard, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thou compassion, they change not. I heard all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. I heard so many different songs and the, the message of the songs were ministering to me in such a way that where the people were in their unbelief, God was stirring up my belief. He was stirring it up within me. I vowed that if I came out of that, that I was gonna do what God told me to do. But I had not found a church until 12 years ago. I went to St. Mark Holy Church of America here in New York City. And when I went to St. Mark, I met Bishop Nathaniel Townsley Jr. And he saw me and he asked me to talk to him about who I was and I talked to him about who I was. And as I talked to him about who I was, he said, you're a miracle, don't you know that? Yes. You're a miracle, they don't expect you to live. You've, you've been living for seven years now. They, they didn't believe it then, but you're a miracle. You are a miracle. And he took a chance on a miracle and allowed that miracle to be a deacon in his church. He took a chance on a miracle and let that miracle become a minister in the church. He took a chance on that miracle and let the miracle become a pastor within the church. He called me and I told him in 2011, I said, if the Lord has saved me this long and this hard and he wanted me to be here, there's a message that he wants me to spare, he wants me to teach and I'm not keeping it to myself. I said at the front of that church, I said, wherever he sends me, whatever he wants me to do, I'll do. Yeah. Wherever he wants me to go, I'll go. If he sends me to across the seas to preach across the seas, I'll go. If he sends me through the mud, I'll preach through the mud. I'll do what he wants me to do because he spared me. He spared me so that I might help somebody else. One of my favorite songs that I sing is, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. I don't know how long I have, yeah. but as long as I'm living, as long as there's breath in my body, as long as there's a reason for me to breathe, I'm going to tell somebody else about Jesus. Anybody else want to do that? As long as there's a breath in my body, I want to make sure that somebody else knows that Christ is the reason for our living. Christ is there to help us live. It's in him that we live, move, and have our being. Is there anybody else that might have dealt with something and you realize that if you not come out of it, that it was God that did it? God did it. Somebody say, God did it. God did it. And because God did it, you're in this space today. And so if you notice you have a command to go and tell somebody about Christ, I invite you to stand. I invite you to stand all over the building. I invite you to stand. If you know that you are called to let somebody else know about the message of reconciliation, the message that God will change the hearts of those that do not know him, but you are their window to God. You are the representative that they will see. You're the one that they will know. If they don't get nobody else, they're going to get you. And you need to be the red epistle. You need to live your life in such a way that people are reading your life and saying, I want what it is that you have. Anybody going to do that with their life? Anybody going to do that anyway? Anybody's song testimony after this is, I'm going to live so God can use me. Any way, any time, anywhere you're sending me, God, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you to people that I don't even know. I'm just going to tell about the goodness of the Lord, how you saved me, how you raised me, the way that you have saved me and brought me this far by faith. Hallelujah. We give God glory. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and give God the glory. Let's put our hands together and give God the glory.
Jesus is the, Jesus best, is the best thing, thing that ever happened. That ever is that anybody's happened. testimony? Jesus is the best thing. Jesus is the best thing that ever yeah. happened. That ever happened. Jesus is, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Ever happen to me, to me. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that desires that they will be lifted? Does anybody that desire prayer at this time? Prayer so that when you leave this place, you know that you're covered to talk to somebody else about Jesus. That you know that you can be like Sister Margie, who I love, just sometimes just sitting on the side of the church and just handing out a track. That's her ministry, that's what she does. It's some people that can be somewhere, and all of you have to say a word, and he brings, brings it right in, and you know exactly what they're talking about. You know that they're bringing you right to the, to the Master Jesus themselves. They're telling you the story about how they overcame. Amen? Amen. If there not be one, if there might be one at home, I just want to pray right now for you. That you become empowered in your walk with Christ. That if you did not know Christ up until today, that you recognize that Christ died, that you might have life and have that more abundantly. That you cannot live, move, or breathe without the salvation that God has given you through Christ Jesus. That while he was in Christ, he was reconciling us back unto him. And so he has reconciled you back. And so now it is your turn to turn around and tell somebody else about the work of God the work that Christ had done on the cross and how he did it in your life. Sometimes the cross might be a little too far, so you have to tell him about what he did in your life, how he changed you, how you were saved and set free. If you agree with that prayer, you know that you are saved. And as you know that you are a part of a family, a host family of God that will love on you and care for you and pray for you and protect you, even in the midst when the world is dark. There are people of light people of salt that are preserving the earth hallelujah that are people of light that are pointing the way to Jesus in God's name hallelujah we thank you Lord it is done in Jesus name we pray we say thank God and amen let's put our hands together hallelujah hallelujah let us At ask Historic our First Church, officials to come so that we can do our people in the community with the love of Jesus Christ and have been doing so since 1924 we're committed to helping people in need by providing food, clothing, emotional support, and spiritual growth, especially in times like these. People of all races, ages, and walks of life. We deliver meals to seniors and the physically challenged while providing resources and food to homeless shelters. Help us continue the work of the Lord with your tithe and offering. Give and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down and running over, shall the Lord pour into your lap. The way you give to others is the way the Lord will give to you. So join us in lifting people up as we all learn and grow together. You can give in three ways. On Cash App at dollar sign historic FC or Givelify. If you prefer to mail in your tithe or donation, just send it to 221 Kingston Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11213. Thank you for supporting the ministries of Historic First Church, a legacy of love, service, and community. At Historic First Church, we're about serving people in the community with